In this video, we're going to talk about range, variance, and standard deviation of ungrouped data. So we're going to have an example set of numbers. They have 1, 2, 4, 7, 9, and 12. And we will get the range, variance, and standard deviation of this set of data. It's actually as an ungrouped data. And these three uh, range, variance, and standard deviation are what we call measures of dispersion or sometimes measures of variation because they um, measure the dispersion or the spreadness of the numbers from the center. So it's talking about how wide or how spread the numbers are, how scattered they are. So let me illustrate to you uh, the idea of these measures of dispersion. So let's take for example we have a mean of is equal mean equals ten, and we don't have an idea what are the data where this mean equals ten coming from. So by having this, you will have no specific. Uh, idea of sets of numbers because um, there are many possible sets of data that can contain mean equals 10 for example we have this so these are this set of data has a mean of 10 by adding all divided by 5 that is 10 and another one we have 8 9 10 11 12 that is still set of data with a mean equals 10 if we add this all divided by 5 it will be 10 and another one we have 4 7 10 13 and 16 so again if we add it all divided by 5 because there are 5 numbers the mean is still equals 10 so having the uh an idea of the mean of a set of data is not enough for you to have a picture of how it looks like. That's why it's important for you to know how scattered the numbers are. And that is the range, variance, and standard deviation. The measures of dispersion. So, the measures of dispersion is talking about how uh, the values are far apart from the mean. The mean is 10, so how far apart they are. So in the, the first set of data, obviously the dispersion is zero, meaning the, the range, the variance, the standard deviation are zero because they don't, they don't differ from the mean. The numbers don't differ from the mean. They are not far from the mean. They are exactly equal. While the, the remaining two sets of data, so these are not the same as the mean, so they... The standard deviation and the range and the variance are not equal to zero. We don't know yet how much is the value because there's a formula to follow. But we are sure that the third one, the 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, has a higher dispersion value compared to the set of data in the middle because it is more spread. And it, the numbers are farther from the mean compared to the second one, the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's the idea of measures of dispersion. And let me show you now how to solve this and what's the formula involved. So let's have the example again. And then we're going to compute first the range. So what is a range? So range is the rough estimation of dispersion so if you say rough then that means it will just give you an idea of how dispersed the numbers are but not uh not near from the the exact value of its spreadness so if, let's say for example if you are in a, in a large crowd and you want to know the estimation of the of the audience for a crowd then um, you can just say there are hundred thousands of people so that's 
an example of a rough estimation which is the same idea as the range so you're just giving a very uh, unreliable I would say unreliable uh, number for dispersion but at least it will give you an idea but you cannot rely on it because it's just a rough estimation so here's uh, the formula for range so we have r for range which is equal to highest minus lowest or highest value minus lowest value so it's equal to the highest value in this data is 12 and the lowest is 1 so we subtract 12 minus 1 then the range is equal to 11 so that's how simple it is to find the range So we're going to use the same example. We have 1, 2, 4, 7, 9, and 12. And we're going to find the uh, variance. So variance is more accurate in finding, in, in knowing the dispersion of a data, data set. So we, this is more accurate in knowing how spread the data are, how far the, the values from the mean. And so we use this formula. So this is the symbol for variance the s squared it's actually a sample variance and it's different for population variance but mostly in research we only get the sample instead of uh, using the data of the whole population so we're going to use the sample variation of sample variance and the sample standard deviation instead of using the po whole population so sample variance where s squared is equal to so the sum of the square of x minus mean so because variance is actually the sum of the square difference from the mean so and then divided by n minus 1 so n is the number of data uh, given so here it's 6 so it's going to be 6 minus 1 and then we also have standard deviation so standard deviation is denoted by s which is actually equal to just the square root of the variance so it's not going to be hard for you to find the standard deviation if you have the variance because the value of the variance whatever it is just get the square root of it so you don't need to repeat the same procedure because the standard deviation and the variance are having similar formula it just differs on the square root and another formula that we we needed for to solve for the dispersion value is the mean because as you can see in the formula it contains mean x minus mean so that means we need to find the value of the mean and the formula let's remember the formula of the mean which is equal to sum of the values divided by the number of values so we're going to add all six numbers divided by how many numbers there are which is six so let's solve for the mean of this data set which is mean is equal to so we're going to add all it's 35 we add all 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 9 plus 12 it's 35 divided by how many value how many values are there so it's 6 so 35 divided by 6 so it's approximately 5.83 so it's actually 83333 and so on so round up to two decimal places that's approximately 5.83 and that's the value that we needed to find the uh, variance in standard deviation so let's continue with uh, with solving the measures of dispersion so this is what you're going to do first to align the, the given uh, set of data vertically and we will name it x so the given our given values are what you call x so we have 1, 2, 4, 7, 9, and 12. So as you can see, it's arranged from smallest to biggest, from top to bottom. But it's not necessary. So you can just put the numbers 
uh, whatever is the given, you may not arrange them in order. It's not necessary. And then we're going to have the second column, which is actually the x minus mean. So x minus mean, that means this column is we're going to subtract the value of x with the mean, which mean is 5.83. So let's have the first row, 1 minus 5.83. So the difference is negative 4.83. Next, 2 minus 5.83. So negative 3.83. Then 4 minus 5.83 is negative 1.83. 7 minus 5.83 is 1.17. 9 minus 5.83 is 3.17. 12 minus 5.83 is 6.17. So that's how you get the x minus mean column. Then you will get the square of the x minus mean. So these, these values in the second column, you just have to square them. So when squaring a negative number, the result will be positive because negative times negative is positive. So it is expected that all the, the values in this column should be all positive. If there is negative, then there is something wrong. So let's get the square of the negative 4.83. So if you say square, it means you times the number by itself. So the result will be 23.3289. Then square of negative 3.83. 14.6689 then square of negative 1.83 3.3489 square of 1.17 1.3689 square of 3.17 10.0489 and 6.17 squared is 38.0689 now, if you will ask if it's possible, is it possible for you to put only rounded numbers up to two decimal places, um, it, is, it will affect the final result. So, while solving, do not round off until you get the final answer. So, for now, since you are still solving, then you just put whatever the value is uh, given except for the mean because mean is um, you need to subtract the mean it's gonna be very long so you can round off the mean up to two decimal places but for the two columns x minus mean and square of x minus mean you need to write the exact value then let's get the sum of square of x minus mean because that is what is in the formula so the, the sigma symbol means that you get you need to get the total or the sum so let's add all this uh, six in the third column and you will get a sum of 90.8334 so after getting that then you will proceed to the formula of the variance then you will subtract the sum of x minus v square so i mean you substitute so you're going to substitute the sum of x minus mean squared so it will be equal to 90.8334 over the n minus 1 n is 6 because there are 6 given data or values so it will be 6 minus 1 obviously that's 5 so using a calculator you will divide 90.8334 divided by 5 so the variance is approximately equal to 18.17 and that's the value of the variance and for the standard deviation so you'll get the square root of both it will, so square root of s squared is s equal to get the square root of 18.17 or you may get the square root of the original uh, fraction that 90.8334 over 6 minus 1 you can get the square root of that 
So the, the standard deviation is equal to approximately 4.26. So as I said, it's easier to get the standard deviation after getting the variance because you just get the square root of the answer of the variance. And that's the standard deviation. Thanks for watching and I hope you have learned from this video. Please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button. And also, write the math topics you want to learn in the comment section.